everybody, let's get into this tutorial of online resources that can be used to research your historic New York City building. Just a heads up, this is mainly for buildings. This is mainly relevant for buildings built after 1866, because that is when um, the Department of Buildings began to collect new building permits. For buildings built before then, you would have to go to the New York City Municipal Archives and um, view tax records. So let's jump into this. I will also be sharing all of these. We will also be sending an email out with links to all of these resources so you can research buildings on your own. So the first thing I usually do is use the New York, I tend to use the New York City, the Zola map from the New York City Department of City Planning as a kind of guide throughout my research. It is like a zoning and it is New York City zoning and land use map and it provides a lot of great information including commercial overlays, zoning districts, and stuff like that. However, for this specific tutorial, I'm actually going to turn off zoning districts and turn off commercial overlays. It works totally fine. You can totally do this with it on. I just prefer to have it off. But I will turn on historic districts and landmarks, and that just shows, highlights which buildings and areas have been landmarked in, which is relevant because it, a lot of information will be more easily available about them versus buildings that aren't already landmarked. So let's jump into the tutorial with an example. So I'm going to use 27 Washington Square North as an example. And as you can see, it is located in the Greenwich Village Historic District. And this is what each building's page will look like. And you can see that it has a block and lot number, which is going to be very useful. If you didn't know, every building in New York City, in addition to having a street address, also has a block and lot number. It also provides links to other city databases, which have useful information, including um, the building information search, which allows you to see other addresses available and look up um, historic permits and stuff like that. So for this specific one, I have already opened up the action section, which is historic permits of the building. These are not visible online, but you can get um, them through the New York City Municipal Archives um, um, block and lot folders. And it's kind of sometimes not that speedy. So I've also already opened up the jobs and filing section, which has some newer permits that are visible and you can look through. But now back to the Zola map, each building entry provides a year built date, and I don't usually rely on this one. I like to confirm this date by having another source, which we will go over in this tutorial. So this building, this page says it was built in 1898, which is actually correct, but I'm going to show you how we know it is correct. So since we know it is in the Greenwich Village Historic District, we can pull up another map, which I will also be sending a link to, which is the Discover New York City Landmarks map provided by the New York City Landmark Preservation Commission. When you go onto this map, it provides a little bit more information about each building, such as who the architect and builder is and such, so on and so forth. It also links to the designation report, which every single historic district and individual landmark has. So these have definitely gotten gradually more Detailed, this is one of the earlier districts and it is very long and detailed, but not quite as detailed as the each entry is for another district, such as the, the South Village Historic District, which is down here. Let's see. Yeah, South Village Historic District. But back to 27 Washington Square North. So here is how the report um, looks and you can go and find each building based off of the area. But to save us some time, I'm going to show us another resource provided by Village Preservation, which is the Greenwich Village Historic District then and now map, in which we have linked the designation report for every building directly to their page along with their designation photo. So this is 20, this building in the center is 27 Washington Square North in the 1960s when the Greenwich Village Historic District was designated and this is it in 2019. So through this page, you can then access um, the designation report linked to the section that is closer to where the actual building entry will be. So if we scroll down, you can see 27 through 28 has some additional information. And there we go. Um, the LPC also provides a map that shows permits filed on historic buildings since 2018, which can be 2016, my bad, which can also be a useful resource. 
All of the designation reports that fall within Village Preservation's catchment area, which is roughly um, Houston Street to 14th Street in Manhattan, are also accessible on our website, and I will send out a link for this. But let's get back to how to date buildings. So we've done a building that's in a historic district. I now want to bring in another example that isn't in a historic district. And to do so, I will bring in 74 Fifth Avenue. So if you go here, it has a lot of the same information, but it doesn't have that layer over it because it's not in a historic district. So this one was built in, according to this, it was built in 1910, which is actually accurate. And I'll show you how we can confirm that. So there's another website called the Office of Metropolitan History. Don't worry, I will send you a link around where you can um, search for the building permits. So we will search for Fifth Avenue. And there we go, built in 1910. This built in 1910 for Henry Horn. This page is unfortunately only available for buildings in Manhattan that were built after 1900, but I'll be showing you another way that you can research buildings when that it does not fit those parameters. So to do so, I will bring up another example, 72 Fifth Avenue which is next door to 74 Fifth Avenue. According to this, according to Zola, this building was built in 1920, which is not correct. And I will show you how I know that. So if we go here, hypothetically, to search that, we can search to search the building, 72 Fifth Avenue, something comes up that is not relevant to this. It's 72 West 48th Street. So we don't need that. That's not really relevant. So we'll go back here. And this is where the historic, the New York Public Library has a, um, an archive of the New York City Fire Insurance topographic and property maps. They're often also referred to as um, Stanborn maps. And these are a great way to help us figure out when a new building was added. So for this specific building, we'll go down to Manhattan. And so we know you can just go through all of them. And to save us some time, I know that the maps of interest for this one are gonna be 1893 South of 14th Street which this building is, so I'll open that in a new tab. And with that open, I typically like to click on the build, the first page or any page really. And then I like to view the item as a book to scroll through the available pages. So if you go to the top section that says jump to and then select page, it allows you to scroll down and it gives the parameters for which page is going to be, which it's going to give the, the parameters for which page you can find the relevant information on. So for this one, we'll do, let's see, where did it go? 14th Street, 4th Avenue, Astor Place, and so. This is plate 23, bounded by West 14th Street, 4th Avenue, Astor Place, Waverly Place, and 6th Avenue, which 5th Avenue and 13th Street would fall into. So based on this map, in 1893, there was um, a building here, but it was called the Hotel Lenox, which we know is not the building that is currently there. So currently, we know that sometime between 1893 and today, a new building was added to that property. So we go back to the homepage for um Manhattan map for all the maps and Manhattan and then we go down to the next available map for that area which is going to be the 1897 Manhattan map which is in the Atlas of the City of New York so we do that and this one actually has an index available for that this actually already has an index available and also has which also has the key to the building, but I will similarly choose to view item as a book to scroll through and find out where it is. So for this one, it's going to be, let's see if that's, yes, bounded by West 14th Street, East 14th Street, and um, West 3rd Street. So now that we have that open, we can similarly zoom in on 13th Street and 5th Avenue and see that there is a different building there than was previously there. And this is the building that is currently standing. So 
at some point between 1893 and 1897, that building was completed. Now that we have a more narrow period of time, we can go to the real estate record and builder's guide provided by Columbia University and view all of the volumes and years. These date from originally from 1868 and then after 1878, they began to have an index which makes it a lot easier to use. So for this particular building, we'll start with the issue that dates to January to June 1893. So you can either read online or view on a PDF. For this example, I'm going to read online and basically scroll through it you, until you find the projected building section. But I've already found that section for us in a different tab. So here we go. One second. So projected buildings. And then on the next page, as you scroll through, it's done by avenues. So this one is on Fifth Avenue. So Fifth Avenue, south of 40th Street, it's either going to be, if it's in this particular one, it'll be on page 272, 506, or 763. I previously looked through all of them and know that it is, it is on page 763, which I have opened in this tab for us. But you would just hypothetically scroll through this and go to page 763 and it would be there. So I also downloaded it as a PDF in order to better zoom in on the entry so you can all see it, but you don't necessarily have to do that. But there, there we go, Fifth Avenue, Northwest Corner, 13th Street, seven story brick and iron warehouse, cost 120,000, Ottinger and Corn, and the architect is Cleverton and Putzel. Very interesting. There is also, I also like to download them as a PDF, and sometimes I download ones from other years around it just to see what might come up. And when I did that, I downloaded the one from the following year and I searched Fifth Avenue in the, I control, I control F the document and search Fifth Avenue. And then I was able to find this entry from 1894, which is an advertisement for office space in a building, which I thought was super fun and that is the building that is currently standing, and I can show you right there with that, and I just love moments like that. There is also some other resources that Village Preservation has, and actually for this specific building, it's in our um, proposed um, South Union Square Historic District, so we've already done a lot of research for it. So you can go to any building that falls into this area that's been highlighted in gray and just see some additional information. So here you go, 72 Fifth Avenue has its own entry and built in 1893, designed by Clarendon and Pretzel. There you go. And that's the same information that was in the real estate record and buyer's guide. Additionally, if your building falls within the East Village, you can use Village Preservation's um, East Village block finder, which um, provides the building construction date and architect and a lot of other fun information for a lot of buildings around the neighborhood. So if we just click on block 463, which is, um, here it is. And if we wanted to click on 9 East 7th Street, a lot of, we can figure out exactly when it was built, built in 1867 for commercial use. Um, and the original owner was the Metropolitan State of Spain. And yeah, that's basically how you date building. And I will be sending out all of these resources to all of you. So the next thing that we'll be looking at is iCards. And these provide a great historical resource of what the building was used for and different alterations and stuff that was made to it. So this one definitely varies in how much information is available on each iCard and some buildings they are not available for, but let's get started with an example. You can, you need to access this through the HPD online website. So unlike this, which automatically links to the web, the page of the building you're looking at, this one doesn't, so you'd have to search. So let's search 74 Fifth Avenue. And when this comes up, a whole page of information comes up and you scroll down to the section that says historic image archive, historic image cards, and then click on view all. And then you click here in order to open it. Sometimes it can take a second to load, but there we go. So as you can see, it's a commercial building and it provides different 
um, just different information that it has and scroll down and also different uses that it had over time. So classroom on each story, but I'm actually going to bring up another example, which is 27 Martian Square North, which is also been looking at and this one is pretty exciting so I've already gone on and searched it and I've also opened it prior to starting this recording so it's already up there but this one's a little different because it's residential and when you scroll down it has something super fun which is the uh, historic account of how it was laid out this isn't necessarily when it was built it's just when the card was taken so this, I guess, was taken in. This was drawn out in 1913. So you can see the original layout of both the um, public, the main floor, which the public hall, and this is where people would enter. enter. And then you can also see all how the rest of the, the building stories look and how it was all laid out. A lot of buildings, unfortunately, do not have these layouts, but many larger residential buildings I have found do have, I'm gonna scroll out, have um, just the number of apartments that were on each floor over time, which can be interesting. So this one, for example, was issued in um, 1952, and it has um, three apartments on the first three stories and three apartments on all the floors, stories except for the fourth. But then there's another one issued in 1955, in which you can see that there's actually five apartments on the, at that point, there were five apartments on the first story and on the fourth story, which shows that there were some alterations taken over time. And yeah, that's basically what this resource is like. And I hope that you have, are able to find this for your building and find some insight, find it to be insightful and learn something. So the next thing I'll be reviewing is how to find historic images for your building and various different resources that you can use to find them. The first of which is going to be the 1940s and 1980s tax photos, which if you didn't know, in around 1940 and around 1980, um, the city took photos of every single building in New York City. So a photo should be available of your building in this resource. These are available both on a map and in an archive. So let's get started with the map. This is the 1940s tax photo map, and you can either search it or zoom into the building that you want. So I know that 27 Washington Square North is available here. And if you click on the building, um, then it is visible here. And then similarly for the 1980s one, you can zoom in and explore, click on the building you want and it's there. You can also search it. And I'm gonna use a different example to search it. I'll use 72 Fifth Avenue. So I wanna note that two options come up one of which would be Brooklyn and one of them which would be Manhattan or depending on if there's multiple addresses for the building you're looking at, it might be a different borough. But I find that Manhattan is usually the second one. And then when you click on there, when you search it, the building that you're interested in comes up. These photos are also available in an archive which comes from the city government. And this is where the block and lot numbers come into play. So if we go to 72 Fifth Avenue, or let's start with 74, you can see that um, the block number is 577 and the lot is 42. And these will allow you to search. So let's see, block equals 577. And so you type in in the search box, you can just type in block equals 577 and lot equals 42. So when you search that it should come up. And there you go and the 1940s tax photos and two different ones come up. It's the similar process with the 1980s one. So I just like to check to confirm I'm on the 1980s collection and then you can, it saved my search. So I'll just type it in like that, but you can search it and the photo of it from 1980 should pop up. There is something I wanna note, which comes up in 72 Fifth Avenue. Some buildings, when they have been subdivided into a co-op or a condo, they develop a new lot number, which starts with 75. So this one is 7501. And that number cannot be used to search the archive. So what you have to do is instead, I have found the easiest way to do this is search for the entire block. So since this is on the same block, it has the same lot, the same block number as 74 Fifth Avenue, and I would just type in the block number there. So from there, so block equals 577, push enter, and the entire block should pop up. But let's see, I guess it's taking a second. 
And for some reason it popped to 1980, but you can scroll down and find the building you're interested in. And here we go. You can see it's 72 Fifth Avenue. And this allows us to see the original lot number for the structure, which is lot 44. So now if we search that in the corner, it would come up like there from that. So there we go. The building comes up. Also kind of interesting, if you reference the historic maps that we looked at before, that lot number will be visible. For example, if we look at the 1940s map and you zoom in on East 13th Street and um, Fifth Avenue, you can see that it says 44 and in the center of the building and in the center of the block, it says 577. There are some additional resources, the next of which is only available if the next thing we will be looking at is the um, Landmark Preservation Commission designation photo archive. And this is where the layer for historic districts and landmarks becomes super relevant. So if your building falls into one of these districts, you should be able to search this archive and find an image of the building. And I will show you how to do so. For some reason, it doesn't come up with the Greenwich Village Historic District. But luckily, you can reference the Greenwich Village now and then map from Village Preservation in order to find that photo. So you can just click on any photo there and find the designation photo from the 1960s. But for other districts, for example, NoHo, which is right this district here, if you click on 686 Broadway, you can search this archive by using the borough block and lot number here that I'm highlighting. And I usually just copy this and paste it into the search function. So there you go, um, a historic image of the building from 19, this one comes from 1999 because I believe because that's when the district was designated, but will come up. And if for whatever reason the historic district you're interested in doesn't come up, I believe you can request them from the Landmark Preservation Commission. Um, the next resource is a little more general, it's called Urban Archive. And what this is, is several organizations, including Village Preservation, have uploaded their historic images and other information to the map. And if we click on any of the buildings that come in purple, there'll be some historic images and information. So here's 72 Fifth Avenue, and there's a photo of it from 1915. This one comes from Village Preservation, and yeah, you can get a little more backstory to the building. Um, a similar resource is the old New York City map. So this is just a variety of historic images geotagged to different corners and you can just click around and explore how they have changed over time and i'll be sending links to all of these to you so you can explore them on your own the village present we also have our own image archive with over 4,000 images that you can casually explore and scroll through or if you're looking for something more specific you can use the search function and whenever doing research i highly recommend using quotation marks so if we use 30 Leroy Street as an example, let's see what comes up. With quotation marks, we click enter. And there we go, some historic images come up and any other information we have on the building, for example, a blog post about its history is available here. The last thing I wanna go over is less widely available, but super fun. It's the real estate brochure collection from Columbia. These are date to, I believe, the 1920s to 1970s, and I typically map all of them. Here, I click on the corner to map all items and I just scroll around and see what's available. And these vary based on location. Let's see what's over here. Yeah, like there's just some different advertisements for buildings when either they were constructed or at some point. And they have some floor plans. I always love finding floor plans in my research, but yeah. So that's basically it. I hope that you find these resources to be useful and you can find the date of your historic building and other information about it out there. So thank you.